guys, welcome back to Sissy Spaces. And if you're new, welcome. In today's video, we're deep cleaning the upstairs on a suite bedroom, bathroom, and walk-in closet. And of course, I've included my daily load of laundry. I had also planned to clean the kitchen once hubby was done making his award-winning chili, but the boys beat me to it, and you know I was grateful for it. By the way, today's video is a good one, and I hope it motivates you to get some cleaning done. And if so, leave me on in the background and let's do this together. Also, I'm changing things up a bit as far as cleaning products are concerned, and I must say I will be doing this in the future. And as always, if you enjoyed today's video, at the end of the video, please hit that like and subscribe button and share this channel with your family and friends. Also, leave a comment. I would love to hear from you, and I always respond. After washing my hands, we're gonna get started in the bedroom. And as you just saw, I sprayed the bathroom down and will allow the product to sit in order to give it time to work while we clean the bedroom. Also, there will not be a video on Wednesday, January the 31st. My mom, who is 82 years old, is back in the hospital again for the next three days. And I'll be spending some time with her. She lives in Macon with my sister and is bedridden. She's not in pain, but is having some problems. So the doctor wants to monitor her for the next three days. Some good news though, I will be back on Sunday, February 4th, and I'm hoping you'll join me. This is a split king temper pitted bed, and I always raise the head of the bed, which makes it easier to tighten the fitted sheet underneath. It also relieves the pressure off my back as I don't have to bend over as much. Now that the bed is tidied, we can get started on cleaning the remaining surfaces in the room. I would normally open a window to allow the room to air out, but it's currently raining, so instead of using Pledge, I'm only gonna use a damp microfiber cloth. This reduces the amount of aerosols in the air, which can irritate your eyes or throat or even cause headaches and other health problems. I'm still gonna use Pledge in the future, but not as much during the winter months or on rainy days. Last year in the month of October, I cleaned all my walls using Zep Foaming Wall Cleaner. And my goal for this year in the month of February is to clean all my blinds using either a damp microfiber cloth or Clorox wipes. Some have yellowed over time due to sun exposure, but yellowing can also occur due to an accumulation of dust and grime. These blinds are not that bad, so I'm going to use a wet microfiber cloth today, but if they were, I would have used the Clorox wipes. By the way, do you have any cleaning goals for this year? And if so, what are they? In between cleaning the blinds and before wiping down the furniture, I rinse my microfiber cloth. And I wish I had shown you guys the dirt I rinsed out after cleaning the blinds. I did remember though in between cleaning the furniture and as a reminder, I'm not using any cleaning product, just water and a microfiber cloth. And sometimes that's all you need.
purchased this bedroom set over 13 years ago, and sometimes I feel like there's 13 years of dirt and grime stuck in the crevices of these pieces. I've tried using a brush to get rid of the dirt, as well as Q-tips, but some of it will not budge. It's even worse than the Umwar, as you'll see in just a minute. Whenever I clean furniture in a room, I start at one end of the room and finish at the other end, wiping all surfaces from top to bottom. This ensures you don't miss anything and lessens your workload because you're not cleaning the same area twice. Also, if you get interrupted, it's easy to remember where you left off. Also, I noticed a few of the handles were loose on this dresser and so I had my son tighten them later that evening. Did you see the dirt in between the crevices of the armoire? And I spent another 30 minutes cleaning between the crevices of the headboard and the footboard. When I saw this set in the showroom 13 years ago, I refused to go home without it. Now I wish I would have. You live and learn. closet has a single light located above the door, so this room remains fairly dark. To add additional lighting, we purchased this stick-on battery-operated lights from Amazon, which helps, and they're motion-activated. attaches the hamper to the door broke off over a month ago and it is on my list of projects to complete this year. In the meantime, we're going to clean out the hamper, finish dusting the shelves, turn on our robot to vacuum the floors, and then collect the towels to take them to the laundry room to be washed. I started a load off camera earlier in the day and will start a new load of towels after the first load is completed. Another cleaning product change is I used the last bit of borax in today's video. So since then I've been using Shout as a substitute. So instead of pouring borax in the tub of the washer, I'm pouring a little bit of Shout in the liquid detergent dispenser. I'll let you know if it's working better than the borax in a future video. Also the bulky load I placed in the washer off camera is so wet and heavy, so I added another spin and drain cycle. This happens when I misjudge the size of the load. And while waiting for this spin cycle to end, I'm going to fill in the spots on this vanity with a color marker that I purchased from Walmart. It did a great job on the bottom portion of the vanity, but not so well on the top. I'll try it again later and not wipe it off so quickly this time. So 
as you can see, the spin and drain cycle is done. And on this LG front load washer, it's 11 minutes long. Because it's a large bulky load, I'm gonna place it on the bulky large drying cycle, which according to LG is meant for thick fabrics, but I also use it for thick loads. If you find your dryer not drying your clothes after a full cycle, first clean the vent trap and check to ensure there isn't a blockage or restriction in your home exhaust system. In other words, go outside where the dryer is vented and remove any visible restrictions or blockage in the vent. Also, in the future, for large loads, you may want to add another drain spin cycle, which will lessen the amount of drying time needed. Today, instead of using my go-to, which is a swifter duster on my vanity lights, I'm using another damp microfiber cloth. And of course, I'm rinsing it in between each use. As far as I can recall, I've never used a dry microfiber cloth to dust my vanity fixtures, and I wouldn't recommend it. A dry microfiber cloth doesn't necessarily wipe the dust away. It only rearranges it slightly to the point where you think the job is done, only to find yourself coming back to do it again later. A wet microfiber cloth or swifter duster, on the other hand, are better because they both draw the dust particles in, lift it from the area, instead of moving them around. But make sure your microfiber cloth is damp and not wet. To ensure this, after rinsing it, I wring it out at least three times. I changed the formula of my cleaning vinegar mixture by slightly adding less water and more Dawn dish detergent. I did this today to see if it did a better job of cleaning, and it did. A word of caution though, it did leave some soap residue behind and required more water to rinse it off. I'm gonna try using it a few more times on the shower doors, sinks, and toilets, and let you know the results in a future video. any of my past videos, you know my son rarely uses this side of the vanity, as this is his bathroom, bedroom, and walk-in closet. By the way, this home has two owner suites. This one, which is located upstairs, and as I said before, is used by my oldest son, and the downstairs owner suite, which is used by hubby and I. In order to clean them thoroughly, I have a rotation system in which I clean each of them once every three to four weeks, along with the three remaining bedrooms within this home. when using a damp microfiber cloth to clean your light fixture, you want to avoid wiping the bulb. I do not recommend using a damp microfiber cloth or spraying solution on the bulbs as this could damage it. If you must clean your bulbs, use a swifter duster or turn off the light, allow it to cool, remove the bulb, then take a clean dry duster and wipe all around the surface of it. As you just saw, I did not wipe the bulb, just the fixture itself. If you're able to easily remove the drain plug, do it and clean it. I don't do this for all my vanities because some require a degree in acrobatics in order to remove them. 
But this one's been like this since they installed the sink, and I'm happy it is because I can keep it clean. You will not believe the amount of gunk and mold that gets trapped under these sink plugs. So if given the opportunity, remove them and clean them. I get this comment every now and then. Your house is already clean. What are you cleaning? No, my house is always tidy, but not always clean. The difference between clean and tidy is when something is arranged neatly in appearance, it's tidy, but not necessarily mean it's clean. To be clean, it has to be free of dirt, marks, or stains. For example, some or all of your teeth are arranged properly but it doesn't necessarily mean they're clean, right? I maintain my teeth like I maintain my home. I clean my teeth every day by brushing and flossing, and I clean my home by tidying and removing it of dirt, dust, and stains. accidentally changed up my cleaning product on my shower doors. Instead of using my vinegar mixture and spray away, I only used the vinegar mixture and I was very surprised at the results. After cleaning, they turned out just as clean and better in some spots. I also didn't need to rinse my microfiber cloth as much and the cleaning vinegar mixture didn't leave any streaks. To be honest, I didn't do it on purpose. I forgot to actually use the spray away on the first glass shower enclosure, but once I wiped it down and saw how clean it was, I decided not to use it on the remaining glass enclosure and door. Also, I removed the extension on the drill, which allowed me to better control it, and I switched to cleaning brushes. In my opinion, with these few changes, this shower was the cleanest it's ever been. this jetted tub as it hasn't been used in a while and by a while I mean months. We're going to clean the shower doors and glass enclosures and we also need to check on the laundry. reminder I only sprayed down the shower with the vinegar mixture which consists of cleaning vinegar, a little water, and a tablespoon or more of Dawn dishwashing liquid. I made sure to wipe off all cleaning product by wiping it down at least three times and rinsing the microfiber cloth in between. After cleaning the remaining glass within this shower enclosure and rinsing the dirt and grime from the bottom of the shower, we're going to clean the toilet before mopping these floors. I turned on the iRobot earlier so I don't need to vacuum, which saved us a lot of time.
On video, it seems as if I rinsed this shower in less than 20 seconds, but in reality, it was more than two minutes. By removing the extender off the drill, I was able to control it better, which means I removed more dirt and grime from the shower walls. I'm now looking forward to using the drill in the remaining showers of my home. After cleaning your bathroom, remember to wipe off any products left out in the open, especially your shower products. These items collect dirt and grime just as easy as your shower walls, and wiping them down removes that grime, in which, left under tenant, can lead to a buildup of mildew. Whenever I clean the toilet, I try to remember to pull out the gloves as it protects me from bacteria and other ill-causing viruses. The main goal of a toilet, as you know, is to collect your waste and it can be loaded with bacteria like salmonella and E. coli, which will make you sick. Wearing gloves is the first step of preventing this from happening. As you can see, you can remove this lid by unscrewing the Phillips screws, but I don't. I instead lift the bolt covers and wipe them down thoroughly with Clorox wipes. I also lift the lids to wipe the top and bottom of them, and I make sure to wipe the handle down first before wiping anywhere around the toilet seat. As an additional measure, I spray the entire toilet down first with my vinegar mixture to loosen up the grime so it's easy to wipe away with the Clorox wipes. I finish cleaning the toilet by using a fresh Clorox wipe as a disinfectant. I make sure to scrub around the rim of the commode because that's where most of the grind mold and bacteria collects over time. And afterwards, I always leave my brush under the seat to air dry. Also, if you have hard water stains, white vinegar will remove it. You'll need to remove as much water from the toilet as possible by flushing it and or turning off the water supply. You'll let the vinegar soak and do its thing between 30 minutes to one hour and then scrub. If this doesn't work, you may also need to use baking soda and or a pumice stone. in this video I didn't mop the bedroom because I like mopping all the rooms I clean on a particular day at one time. I find this to be easier and it requires less time. Of course I do change the Swifter pad in between mopping the bathroom and bedroom. You'll also notice I get a little carried away when mopping like laundry I think it's relaxing and I also enjoy seeing the wet clean surfaces when I'm done. Now that I'm 
done mopping the floors in the bathroom, I changed the pad and began mopping the bedroom. Remember, I didn't need the vacuum because I used the iRobot, and these floors were dirty, as you'll see when I clean the iRobot in just a minute. I didn't show you the Swifter wet pad after I mopped the bathroom because it was gross, but I will show you the Swifter wet pad after I'm finished mopping the bedroom. earlier these floors were dirty. Sometimes the iRobot gets a bad rap because it doesn't clean an entire area or it missed some spots but it may just need to be cleaned or reset to its factory settings or at least that's the case when my iRobot is not functioning properly. I've had all three of my iRobots between two to eight years and I consider them to be one of my best purchases. Now we're going to unload, fold, and put away the first load. I started washing off camera and also load the towels in the dryer. By the way, I took a break and ate dinner. And as I ate, the boys took care of most of the laundry and only left a few items for me to fold on camera. One of you asked me, how do I get my family members to help with the housework? And I think it was because I started the boys off with chores before they could barely talk. They were always responsible for returning their toys to the toy bins when they were young and I gave them other household chores as they continued to grow. In my opinion, if you want them to help when they're older, you need to teach them how to help when they're younger. Loading these towels in the dryer, we're going to prep the washer for tomorrow, clean the lint trap, and chill on the couch with Max for the rest of the evening. If you made it this far in the video, I want to thank you for watching Sissy Spaces. And if you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like, subscribe button, and share this channel with your family and friends. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.